Hi, I'm Pat Patterson, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I built a demo to ingest data coming from an MQTT producer. So this could be simulating um, some kind of IoT sensor. So first of all, let's look at the configuration in stream sets because this is really what uh, drives the demo. So I'm uh, I've got the Rabbit MQ origin. I'm connecting to a locally installed RabbitMQ on uh, localhost. And uh, I'm reading JSON data using the JSON data format there. Now, it's a default install, so I'm not giving much away by showing you the username and password there. Um, and I'm using this geocheckin-q. Now, it's important to note that uh, queue names and uh, routing keys are not the same thing in RabbitMQ. So this is not the, uh, has no correspondence to the topic that my uh, publisher is going to be using. I'm saying it's a durable queue. I want it to stick around. So this is the key bit of configuration here. Uh, you must bind to the AMQ uh, topic exchange and uh, it's got to have a topic type and uh, this routing key, this corresponds to the topic that your uh, MQTT um, producer is going to uh, is going to use your your publisher. And then uh, I think we can look at the um, schema of the messages we're going to be publishing. So I've just got a simple node program here, and it's going to be publishing. Uh, these uh, messages here. I've got a very simple uh, schema. I've just got a two-letter state abbreviation, a time in uh, uh, milliseconds since 1970, uh, a weather string, and uh, a temperature. And this is just random data. I'm using a normal distribution to get realistic looking uh, temperature around a, a mean of uh, 10, I think. Okay, so we're going to be reading those messages from uh, RabbitMQ. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use that two-letter state abbreviation to look up a region. And I've got a handful here. Obviously, you would have 50 in, uh, in real life, but I wasn't about to sit there for about uh, 10 or 15 minutes typing them all in. Uh, and similarly, uh, we can use that same state variable to look up an actual state name because that's what uh, our React database is going to be expecting. So I'm using React TS, a time series database, to hold this data for analysis. And this is a, a custom destination that I've actually written over the past few days. So I'm using, uh, this is standard uh, stream sets functionality. I'm saying, Okay, these fields are required because you know this is the what my database is going to be expecting: region, state, time, weather, and temp. And I'm actually uh, doing some validation here. I've set my uh, sample program to periodically emit a temperature of minus 100, just representing the kind of glitching that you sometimes see in real-life sensor data. And then I'm just kind of showing here how I can be filtering out data that falls outside some uh, expected range. And then since the field name of temp is different from the React column name of temperature, I'm doing the mapping there for that from that field to the column. And here we're just connecting to React and using the geo check-in table name. This is a standard table um, that React explain in their documentation. So uh, the last thing to show is that I have a, a small Java app and it's going to be doing a select to find uh, how many temperature readings there are and do uh, some basic analysis, average, min and max. And if I run that right now, what we should see is that there are in fact um, no temperature records. Okay, so that's what we might expect. So uh, let's set the pipeline running. And uh, once that's started, we can uh, set our 
test producer running. Oh, there's RabbitMQ server is, is up, that's good. And now if I start publishing, I'm gonna publish a record every 100 milliseconds. So very quickly, we should start seeing some action over in stream sets. Yep, in fact, uh, there we have, we have 47 records in this batch, input, 39 output, and uh, eight errors. Oh, it's going up, uh, we're feeding um, data through quite quickly here. And we can actually see that those errors are being picked up in the uh, uh, geo-check-in um, React TS destination. And we can see straight away that they are in fact these unsatisfied preconditions. And it's really nice here that we can drill down into the data and see exactly which record has this negative 100 temperature. Okay, let's go down and pick another one here. This Oregon one is negative 100. This Washington one is negative 100. So we can get a good idea that uh, we have got valid data in the database. So we're pumping that data in. And if we just go, let's go and do a couple of uh, checks on the database here. Zoom in a bit. So we've got 130 values. Uh, and this is just for, um, let's see, South Atlantic, South Carolina. So about a quarter of the records are for South Carolina. And then if we run it again after a few seconds, uh, what we should see is it should be, yeah, so 172. So it's gone up by about 42 records in those few seconds. And uh, the average is around about 10. And they're going from about uh, seven and a half to 13 and a half. So, there you have it. I'm uh, producing, uh, well, simulating sensor data in an MQTT publisher and um, sending it to RabbitMQ, which is brokering that uh, to actually brokering it to AMQP, which I'm able to uh, read in with this uh, RabbitMQ um, origin, enriching the data here, going from those two letter state codes into a region and a state name and I'm writing it to react and on the way through I'm uh, filtering that data to make sure that uh, only valid records hit the database. Thank you for watching.